In this video, I'm introducing the combination of two Excel formulas, equal sum and equal offset. To illustrate how they work together, I built this template, which shows monthly sales for my super startup. The figures appear small, but keep in mind all numbers are in trillions, so this is actually a remarkable and entirely fictional feat. In row 12, we have trailing 12 month sales. And the formula I most often encounter when examining workbooks that combine periods for quarterly or annual data is equal sum which is fine, but it can be a little tedious. If you're working with lots of data, for example, you generally have to count the number of cells individually and make sure that you have precisely 12 in your selection. The equal sum formula will also expand to include new values. If you insert a column, for example, now instead of summing precisely 12, the equal sum formula will include 13 cells. The alternative is to use equal sum and offset. To do that, we'll first input equal sum, then offset. And under reference, we're going to select the cell immediately above, representing monthly sales in period 12 of year one. Then we'll leave the inputs for rows, columns, and height blank, but insert negative 12 for width. So what is this doing? Well, starting with the reference cell, what this does is tell the offset function to return the array of 12 cells leading up to our reference cell, which if you press F9, Excel will show you the values included in that array. Press Control Z to undo. And then we can paste this new formula across the selection with Control R. And that really just scratches the surface of what you can do with some offset. Before providing a couple other examples, Let's look at how this works. Here I have the offset formula with all possible inputs. The reference cell is E27, and we have a value of zero for rows, zero for columns. And the height and width inputs are optional values that when left blank, return the value contained in reference. So for a single cell, this would be a height and width of one. If reference was an array of cells, then the default values would be the dimensions of that array. So to better visualize how this all works, let's input some values. If you input two for rows, offset will count down two places from the reference cell. We can then input two for columns, and you'll note that the value returned is two rows down and two columns over from the reference cell. And whether it's a text value or a numerical value, the offset formula will use the values in row and columns to return the corresponding cell. If, however, you expand the selection to include multiple cells, offset will return an error. And the reason is that with the value of two for width, you're now returning an array. Starting from our reference cell, we've traveled one, two, three rows down, and then two columns over, and with the width equal to two, instructed offset to return the values three and four. And we can see that by selecting the formula, highlighting it, and pressing F9. And now below this formula, I have the same offset formula nested inside the sum function. So if I input precisely the same inputs we have above, three for rows, two for columns, one for height, and two for width, you'll see that the outcome is seven because we've summed the values three and four. So with that, let's take this a step further. One pretty cool trick is to write a formula that you can simply paste across with Control R to return quarterly data. You see that the first value below is equal to 750, then 2,750, 3,000, and so on. And to achieve this effect, all you have to do is adjust the formula we already used to include this counter for columns. It might seem a little confusing at first, because we're using the columns function inside the input for columns in the offset function. 
Now all the columns function does is count the number of columns in a selection. And here you'll note that our selection only includes one column, D17 to D17. Press F9, you get the value 1. And of course 1 minus 1 is 0, times 3, also 0. So much like the previous example, all we're doing here is telling offset to return an array, starting with cell D10, that's three cells wide. So we have periods one, two, and three for the first quarter. In the adjacent cell, all that's changed is that the array within columns has expanded. Because the first cell's anchored, it won't change as we paste this formula across. So now this function returns the value two. So we have two minus one times three, of course, equal to three. So now the array returned by offset starts at cell D10, our reference, counts three columns to the right to arrive at period four, and because we still have the value three for width, returns periods four, five, and six. And then this process simply repeats itself. In the adjacent cell, the value returned by the function columns is three. Three minus one is two times three, gets us the value six. So again, starting at our reference of D10, we're now cutting six columns over and returning the values for periods seven, eight, and nine. And the great thing about this formula is that with slight modifications, it can be used to return quarterly or annual data or really any number of periods that you want. Here we're using the exact same formula, except where we previously had the value three, we now have the value 12 to return total annual sales. All right, team. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope it was helpful.